You may have landed on this video because you're researching and trying to figure out how you can make some extra money. Your life is already pretty busy because you have a full-time job and other responsibilities. How can you bring in some extra cash but still have some free time? You've heard that you can sell digital products on Etsy and it's supposed to be a passive way to make money. But now you need to know exactly how you do it. And that's where I come in. My name is Sean Chalice, and I'm going to teach you how to make and sell digital files on Etsy. And in this edition, I'm going to focus on SVG and PNG files. I'll show you how to choose a niche, how to make your files, and how to post them on Etsy to sell. Before we get started with the tutorial, let's go over a few things that you'll need. You need a laptop, desktop, or tablet, and this is so you can create your designs digitally. You're going to need Canva Pro because you'll need the Pro version of Canva in order to create your SVG files. And then you're going to need an Etsy shop to sell your designs. And no worries if you haven't opened your Etsy shop yet. I have a video that you can watch later that will walk you step by step through the process of creating your Etsy shop. And then you can come back here and continue with creating your first digital listing. Let's get started. SVG is short for Scalable Vector Graphic. It is a vector file that can easily be scaled up and down without losing any of its resolution. You'll mainly see SVG files used for displaying two-dimensional graphics, charts, and illustrations on websites. And then you'll also notice the use of SVG cut files for use with Cricut and Silhouette Cameo machines. PNG is short for Portable Network Graphic, and this is a raster image file. PNGs are popular with web designers because they can handle both transparent and semi-transparent backgrounds. PNGs are the next evolution of the once popular GIF format. One of the first things you'll need to do when getting your SVG shop together is to determine who your target audience is. And you're really kind of determining what your niche is gonna be. One big mistake is starting Etsy or starting to sell digital files anywhere and not knowing what type of files you're going to make. So one day you might make a flower and the next day you might make a messy bun and the next day you might make a baby graphic. Well, this is going to confuse your audience and it's really not going to lend your shop to targeting one set or one type of customer. So what you're going to do is do a little research on Etsy and try to figure out who your target audience is going to be. What customers are you trying to serve? And once you know that, it'll help you determine which type of graphics or SVG files you're going to make. So let's look at a few examples. Let's say I would like to make files for people who make t-shirts, for example. Now, that's still a little broad because that could be a lot of different types of t-shirts. You can see here that I've done a search and let's just look for t-shirt SVGs. And you can see if I do t-shirt SVGs, I get a wide range of things. I have a sarcastic bundle. I have some Disney art. And I'm just going to say stay away from Disney art. Disney art is highly um, copyrighted, is that a, if that's a word. But you don't want to get into any legal trouble. So let's stay away from that. And you can see that there's is a a mom or a mama pack. But you see, if I just put in t-shirt SVG, I'm kind of all over the place because there could be a lot of different types of t-shirts. Now you can still do this and you can have different bundles. And let's say you can have a sassy bundle or you can have a religious bundle and um, you can set your shirt up, Your excuse me, you can set your shop up that way. But you can see how now you've niched down to people who are creating t-shirts, which gives you a lot of flexibility there. But let's look at another scenario. Let's say you wanted to do SVG 
files for people who created um, those really cute wood signs. So let's do wood sign SVG. And you can see the SVG files that we're getting here are a little bit different. So these are SVGs for farmhouse signs. And you can see how you might find some of the same sayings, but the sizes are different. The text is different because they're designed for a sign and not a t-shirt. Let's go back and look at some more. And you can see there's some patterns. I think that says door hangers. You've got monograms, but you can see how the files that you will make will be a little bit different depending on if you are targeting the wood sign type of crafter on Etsy. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's go for, let's do baby. Okay, so here's baby SVG files. So here's another bundle. And these look like files that you can put on a onesie. This is a file that you can use to make a cake topper. And you can see how this could possibly go on a onesie as well. So that's kind of flexible. Again, things that look like they might go on onesies or, cre or to create uh, decorations for baby showers or things like that. But you can see how now we're seeing different types of files. We're seeing baby items and things of that sort. But this is just to show you that you should take a little time to figure out who your target customer is going to be so you'll know what type of files you want to make. And then that's going to give you just a roadmap into how you're going to feel, feel your shop. So take a moment before you make your first SVG file to think about your audience and then choose graphics that that audience is going to want to purchase. We're now in Canva, which is what we're going to use to create our SVG files. I am using Canva Pro, and I do recommend you use Canva Pro because you'll have access to more images that you can use to create your unique designs. And you also have better copyrights on those images. Now, I do not recommend using any images straight out of Canva. You do need to make some tweaks and make some changes to those images before you can use them as your own and possibly sell them on Etsy in your SVG shop. But this video is really going to be used to show you how easy it is to start creating your designs. I'm not going to do anything complicated. I have an idea that I want to do one of the mom life uh, messy bun SVGs. So that is what we're going to do. So we're going to start here. I am on the home page of Canva and I'm just going to click right here on create a design. From here, I can use one of the templates that they have suggested, but I'm going to use a custom size because I know what size I like to use when I'm working inside of Silhouette Studio software. So I'm going to use 12 by 15 and I'm not going to use pixels. I'm going to use inches and I do that every time. So 12 by 15 and then I'm going to create my new design. So this is going to be my canvas It is 12 by 15. And now I'm just going to start by doing a search and I'm just going to go into elements because I know that's where I want to start. And you can see I've already searched some things out, but just so you know how to do it, I'm going to do a search here. So I'm going to do a search for messy bun and I'm just going to hit enter after I type in what I want to search for and then I get a whole bunch of things that are related to my search term messy bun. So I get photos, graphics, videos, and audio. And I know that I want to use a graphic. So I'm just going to go to graphics here. And then I get a lot of different options of what I can use. So I have an idea of what I want. And I'm just going to scroll and see if I can find that one. And I just want kind of the messy bun. Really, I want the ability to 
have something inside of her glasses and inside of her bow. So I'm just going to look around and find the one that I want to use. And I am looking, looking, looking. And I'm not seeing maybe this one. No, she's got some. I'm just going to pull it up so you guys can see it. It's like a skeleton face and oh, everything going on. I don't want that one. So where is the one that I want? Okay, so here's a good one. And I have a bow or bandana and I have the glasses and she's got her bun. So this is a good one for me to use. I am just going to make her a little bit bigger just so we have something to go by. And I think I might do a messy bun bundle. Well, can't say that fast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another page and I'm gonna do maybe a mom and a daughter. So I see this image right here that could be um, used for a kid. And so she's got two kind of ponytails with bows and glasses as well. So we'll do, we'll do both of these. And what I'm going to do here, now you'll notice that this one is already has a pattern inside of the bows and the glasses. And this one has a pattern as well. I'm going to click on it. And it looks like within Canva, you can change the color. So I'm just going to play around with things. Okay, so that changes the color in that bow. Um, I didn't really see the orange color in there, so I'm not sure what that's changing. Okay, so with this one, I could possibly, let's see, the black. Okay, just makes everything one color. And I'm going to go back to black on the hair. Okay, so now I see what I'm working with. So within Canva, you can go in and you can do some tweaks and changes. But in this one, what I'm going to do is add some words. I'm going to add my mom life words to this. So I'm going to go into this left hand menu, click on the T for text. And then I'm just going to drop some text in there. And these, this is my, these are my brand fonts that it always starts with, but I'm going to change that. So I'm just going to do a hashtag uh, mom life. And for some reason I am typing in white, which I cannot see. So I'm going to click on this A up here at the top to change my text color. And I'm going to take that to a black and now we can see that I typed two hashtags and then I'm going to click on it to highlight it. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to change the font and I want kind of a script font and I don't want to take you guys through the drama of finding something so I'm just let's see if we like this one I'm going to hover over this yellow I mean yellow purple circle right here and drag it up so I can get a better view of it and you'll notice that I'm dragging from the corners so I don't warp the text and stretch it out I keep the, the ratios correct with the height and the width and just pull it in and you'll notice that canvas is giving me a center line so i know when i'm centering it on the page and i've centered this image so now with the page so now i know i can center this text with the page as well and it will be centered on the image i'm going to click up here back to change the font again because i don't really like it and this is a thing that i struggle with finding the right fonts and I feel like it takes me forever to find a font that I like. Might be that I have a lot of fonts on my computer. Um, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if I like it, but it's interesting. So we are not here all day. We will just stick with this one. I'm not sure if I love it, but again, for the purposes of this tutorial, it's okay. 
So now I have mom life there. And then um, I'm going to do kind of a kid life down here. So I'm just going to click on that. And then I am going to try to duplicate it. So I'm going to click on these three dots right here. And this icon right here will duplicate. So you just click that. Now you see I have two. And then I'm just going to drag the other down here into my other picture and just change the text from mom to kid. Okay. That was like a really funky text. It's crazy. But again, we're going to leave it. And I'm going to center my picture of my kid. And then I'm going to try to do the same for my kid's life. And that looks terribly off. So I don't like that centering. Let's just see if I can get it centered. Uh, I don't know why that's off to me. There we go. Okay. All right. So I have mom life and kid life there. I feel like mom could be a little bit bigger. So again, it's just a matter of playing around with this and finding where you want your image to be, what you want to add to it. But you're going to put an image here and make it your own. Um, another thing that you can do if you have hand-drawn images or royalty-free images that you're allowed to use that you find on the internet, you can use the upload feature where you have that, in, that image on your laptop or your desktop um, on your hard drive. You can click here, go to upload, and then you can upload your images in here and then drag that image onto the your pad here and go ahead and continue to make your SVG from a hand drawn or an image that you are allowed to use. So I think we're good to go here and um, we're going to use these two images. The really cool thing about Canva is to create your SVG all you have to do is save it as an SVG. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right up here is going to be the name of your file. So I'm going to fix this. I don't want to hashtag in my file name. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call this mom kid life SVG. All right. And this is so I can find it again and take it into any other program that I want, um, like your Cricut software or uh, for me, the Silhouette software. So now I'm just going to click on this share button because now I've made all the changes that I want to make to it. I'm going to go down to download and then I also want PNG versions of these. So I'm going to first save it as a PNG and I'm going to save it as a PNG with a transparent background and if I want to go ahead and save both of these files together, I can go ahead and leave all of these checked. And what Canva will do is zip the files together for me. But what I am actually going to do is save them separately. Um, just because that's the way I like to do it. And I'll be able to find the files separately and not unzip them throughout the course of this tutorial. So, And it's only two. So I'm going to save page one first. And then I'm going to download as a PNG and Canva's going to work on it. And you can see it's downloading here and it's telling me that it's complete. I'm going to click share again. I'm going to download. Now I'm going to go and do page two. I'm going to make it transparent and then I'm going to download. So that's going to give me my kid page. And then what I'm going to do is do the same process for uh, these two pages, but I'm going to save them as SVGs. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go download. I'm going to change them to SVGs here. And again, you, do, you can save them both together. Just a personal preference. I'm going to do page one and download it. 
I'm going to do my last download of my kid file where I say that SVG and I'm going to go here, make it an SVG. We're going to again uncheck that, go to page two, done, and then we are going to download that file. Okay, now we're in our Silhouette Studio Business Edition software. And this portion of the tutorial is just going to show you how to take your SVG up a notch. I do recommend that if you're going to sell SVGs to customers that are going to use your SVGs in a Silhouette Business Studio software or the Cricut software, that you at least download that software, one or the other, to see how those SVG files are going to cut for your users and see if there's anything that you can do to those files to make them easier for your users to use. The last thing you want is for you to sell an SVG file that is hard to use or that your user might not understand. So it's best that you pull it into the software and just take a look at it and see what you can do with it. So what I'm going to do is, for the sake of time, I'm going to pull up the, the mom version of the bundle that I started and we're going to maneuver that file. So I'm inside of Silhouette Studio. I'm going to click on open. I'm going to find that mom version of the file and I want to open the SVG file that we created. I'm going to click on that one there and I'm going to open it. And you see here we have the file. Now one thing that happens when you save an SVG out of Canva, you end up getting um, layers and your background is actually a layer so the first thing I like to do is get rid of that background layer and I just start clicking and dragging and seeing this is just a square rectangle white layer that I don't need and it's usually a couple of those layers inside of the file Let's see now we're down to what I actually need to use and now I just want to investigate what happened to my image when I saved it as an SVG. So basically I'm going to click on her hair and you can see how her hair is one portion, which is pretty cool. Then we have our text down here and the text is each letter is individual, which is okay. I'm going to put everything back. And since I'll probably want to manipulate this hashtag all together, I'm going to highlight it and group everything so it kind of stays together and I don't have to worry about getting anything out of a line. Now let's see what interesting happened with the glasses and the bow. If I click on the outside of the glasses, you can see, okay, that's the rim of the glasses are all together. But what I want you to see here is what happens with this pattern. What it did was I'm going to click on it and you can see how each piece of this pattern is separate. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what's actually happening here. So this means that a person coming in to make this design could definitely create this with the with vinyl and I'm now in the teal part and I'm going to drag it. So there's a a teal piece that's by itself and then the software to create this pattern here it has to cut each one of these lines and squares so just to show you what's going to cut I'm going to go to the send menu and you can I'm going to zoom in so you can see and everywhere there's a red line that is a cut All right so I'm going to move and you can see how if I, I would have a piece of black vinyl here and it's going to cut all of these red lines and I would have to weed this out and then I could have this black pattern over this teal pattern to create this effect, to create the drawing how it's set now. And I think that's pretty cool. Now the one thing that I would do is I am going to group all of this together because the last thing I want is any one of these little lines to kind of move um, out of place. So I'm going to group those. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to grab the teal piece and then grab all of this and group it together. And then if someone um, is cutting these, they would probably cut them together. So I'm going to then grab my two pieces and group them together. And then that means that I can now, I would now probably put my two teal pieces back behind those. And I would do that. And then I would probably group all of that together so I can move everything. And now if I wanted to, I can put my rims back on. And I'm just going to use my arrow so I can get it spot on. Uh, there we go. And then I have everything together. Now, this is just a personal preference because when you're using vinyl, the vinyl kind of shrinks. And you can even see, now that I've grouped everything together, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. There's kind of a white gap here. So if I was gonna make a shirt or, or use this file for anything, this is what I might do to it. So I would take the rims and then I also like to make a duplicate of everything because I might have a user that might want just the outside of the glasses and then the inside of the glasses, the shirt color or the mug color. So they might like the glasses that way. I'm gonna duplicate them, come back in and I'm gonna fill in the glasses. Now, the first thing that I'm worried about happening is um, this piece right here, because I don't think I want that filled in, but I'm gonna see how I like it, if I fill it in. Um, so I'm going to right click, I'm gonna release my compound path, and see what happens. And just like I said, so, this piece filled in. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is group that and duplicate it because I never know what I'm going to like. So before I ever start making changes, I just go ahead and do a duplicate. Now what I'm gonna to try to do here is to keep the center part of the glasses filled in, but remove this piece here. So this piece here is clear. And to do that, I'm gonna double, I'm gonna click here, and you can see how there's a piece that goes over the entire width of the glasses. What I'm gonna do is gonna I'm gonna push that to the back. And then now I should have a piece here, a piece here, and then a center piece. Now, the only thing I want to select is the piece that goes all the way across and then the center piece. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to grab right here. And then what I'm gonna do is hit the subtract. And if you just to know how I got here, I was originally here on the page setup, I went to here, which gives me the modified panel, and then I'm just gonna hit subtract. And you can see now I got rid of the piece that is in the middle. And then at this point, I'm going to group all of this together. Okay, so now I have a set of glasses that have a that have the filled in piece. And I will keep these individual pieces just in case somebody wants them. Um, I think I have all of this grouped together. I do. I'm going to ungroup this. And now it should be my, um, my black pattern should be by itself. I'm going to go up here and bring it to the front. And now, 
I have my black pattern and I have my glasses. So now someone can create the glasses with the pattern or they can create it with just a flat piece of vinyl. And when they are trying to make this, they aren't cutting out two separate pieces. They can do one piece and then, you know, hold the heat press down for a few seconds to tack it and then put over this black piece and then finish it. And you don't have that white line that's going around where you didn't, where you couldn't get the pieces directly to fit together. So I hope all of that made sense. So now we've got a couple of pieces here and I'm just going to go ahead and group these together so I can move them together. So if a person wanted to cut and use the two separate pieces, they could, um, I'm thinking about it and I don't think we need this full piece right here with this in the middle because I think that might look a little weird, but let's look at it. So let's take our black piece and put that there. And I don't know, I think that might look a little strange, but let's put it up against our bun and see if we want, I don't know, we might want glasses that went all the way across. So let's just, you know, have multiple options. What we'll do is we'll take this, the black piece, and we will duplicate it. And so we've got this version and that version. So we've got two versions of the glasses. I'm not gonna worry about getting them right. There we go. So we've got two versions of the glasses and then we've got the separate pieces. If you wanted to use those, you could also use just the rims if you wanted to do that, which I think is cute. So now you, you know, have some options. So we've made some changes to our glasses. Let's look at what we've got going on with the bow. So I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in just so I can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to try to get just the background. There we go. Oops. I'm going to undo, which is my best friend. Let's see if I can just grab the background. Okay. So I have this piece. Then I have a background piece here. Okay. So this bow is really split. So you've got the teal piece here, you're gonna have a teal piece here, a teal piece here, here and here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna to try to get all of those teal pieces together so we're not moving them around. I'm gonna click and hold shift, click in there, click in there, click in there, and click in there. I'm gonna group and now I have all of those pieces. Ta-da, I've got the inside of the bow, the outside of the bow, and then I've got the black pattern. And again, I'm just gonna move this out of the way and I'm going to group all of this together. So a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so now I've got some good pieces for my customer to possibly use. They can create the bow this way. Uh, they can create the bow this way where they've got the pattern. They've got the back piece that they can add on. And you see how um, they did that. They would have to, you know, kind of match it up that way. What I might also do is um, also make a bow. So I think it would be cute. Someone might want to do this where they put the bow on the bond, but have it um, clear or transparent. What they also might want to do is this, where they wanted a, a filled in bow. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this. And then remember in the last, when I was working on the glasses, if I wanted them to fill in, I was just gonna make it a compound path. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say, um, well, I said make it a compound path, but maybe release the compound path would have been better. 
Okay, so now I have um, that as a bow. And this also might be a great piece to use if you were just using the black. Let me pull it forward on this. This might be an easier, an easier cut. Or you can use it here where it's going to actually give you that white space within the cuts. So just a few options. Now what I might do with this one, even still, I'm going to do something so I can see what I'm working with so I'm not working in the same color. So I've changed the color so you can so I can see what I'm working with. And let me show you an interesting thing here. If I go ahead and highlight this one and move it, I've got a inverted version of this bow. So now I have this bow, but with a plain background, which is what I want it. I also have this that I can put be uh, this version that they can put behind and have a full bow. So we're going to keep all of these versions of this bow. Um, that. I really want to go back to my original teal color. Okay, so we're going to keep all of the versions of this bow just to give whoever's making this design some flexibility. Um, and I'm going to group this one. So they could take this bow and put it on her hair, which is pretty cute. Or they could take this bow, which we are not together. Or they can take this bow. I'm going to group everything together so I can move things around easily. You can take this bow and put it on her hair. You can take this one. And then you also have different versions of the glasses. So plain glasses. Let's go ahead and put, group this together so we can move things around. And, you know, you can always ungroup. Um, you've got glasses with the pattern in them. And you have the individual pieces if you need those as well. These are the ones that I don't know if I would use, but hey, everybody's got different preferences. So let's give you glasses like this. And give you those and then the cool part about this file is the person is not stuck with this color teal they can change any of these pieces with these two individual pieces they can have one side of the glasses teal one side pink they've got options they can do whatever they want to do with this file so this is a pretty good cut file and what I might do is arrange these pieces on the page as in one, um, I don't know, version of the graphic. So I might put all of the bows over here and I might put, okay, so I've got this one twice. Are they exactly the same? Yes. Um, and then I might put all of the versions of the glasses over here. And then pull the bond up here. And then maybe create, you know, put in maybe my favorite version, which might be the, more like the original. Like maybe this file and this one. More like the original and then my favorite glasses were probably these okay. 
and if I wanted to I could push that uh, back so her hair falls in front of her glasses which you know it's kind of up to you so that's what her hair falling in front of her glasses and then you know I've got my mom life text right here and then I might select the bond and the mom life and then make sure they were centered and now I've got my mom life SVG file with a few different variations that's just a little bit that's giving the customer a little bit more than if they just purchased it the way that I exported it from Canva so just because you never know when you've got a beginner that's using your file and they might not know how to do all of that stuff that I just did and you might um, have somebody that is using Cricut and the software works a little bit differently but the more options and variations you give the better and then when you put this in your Etsy listing you can show that you're giving them all of these pieces and it might be the difference in them buying your file um, from anybody else's file and then I would do the same thing with the kid version and then I could have a whole mom life kid life bundle that I put together that I could sell on Etsy. So that's just um, a little short tutorial showing you how you can create your SVGs using Canva and then take them up a notch if you have the Silhouette Studio software. And I believe everything that I did here, you can do with the free version of Silhouette because I did not have to save this as an SVG. It was already an SVG when I pulled it, pulled it in. Um, so I believe I did not do anything that you need the business version on but if you see that I did when you're trying to definitely drop it in the comments and let me know because I haven't used the free version in quite some time so that is how you create your SVG and once you make all of those changes you're just going to save your SVG file and kids life svg and i'm just going to go into my onedrive folder um and i'm going to create another folder and this was going to be my mom kid life Oop. bundle so i'm going to create a new folder for that and then save the svg here and I probably won't use SVG in the title. So right here, I'm saving my Silhouette Studio file in case I can come back to it and work on it. But um, I could have also saved it as an SVG as well because the it was an SVG file that I started with. I could have just resaved that, but I'm just going to go here and also resave it as an SVG with my changes. So now I have the modified SVG file saved and also my um, studio file so I can go in and change that. And if you were going to sell these on Etsy, you would upload your SVG file and your PNG file because a lot of people would just want to use it as a straight graphic. They could do sublimation and other things with it um, or print it as an image, wall art, whatever they might want to do. And then if they were going to do any kind of cut projects, they can use the SVG file. So that is how you create your SVGs. Now we need to create our listing photos. But we're not going to start off in Canva. We're going to start off in Etsy so we can see what listing photos we need to create. So this is our last search where we did the baby SVG files. And you can see here the first listing photo in each one of these listings is what shows up in Etsy search. So now we need to go and do a search on our messy bomb, messy bun or mom life SVG and see what type of listing photos are showing up from our competitors. So we're just going to go into the search and we're going to type in mom life 
and choose Mom Life SVG and see what pops up. So now we can see that we're getting some bundles here and we see some ideas for listing photos. Now let's look at this first one here that's also a bestseller and it's a mom and a kid and it's kind of like what we did. But you can see how they're showing the mom and the kid and then the different cuts of the ribbon and the glasses. So that gives us some ideas of what we might need to show in our listing photo or our first listing photo to be more exact. Another thing that we can take note of are the colors that they use and that they're showing the glasses both filled in and empty. So we might use that idea when we're doing our listing photos, but let's look at some more. Let's scroll down and we see another bestseller where it's just the messy bun and the clear glasses. And they noted that they are SVG and PNG files. And then we'll just scroll down and we see another bestseller here where there's a transparent background behind the boat and the glasses showing that a person can fill it in with a pattern. So these are all great ideas that we can use when we're trying to create our SVG files and just show the users what or the buyer what they're going to get with our file. So another example here of the mom and the kid and showing the different layers of the cut files. So lots of examples here that we can find for our messy bun. So now let's scroll back up to that original listing and click on it. Let's make sure it's not an ad because we don't want to cost them any money. But let's dive into this listing and look at not just the first listing photo, but let's get some ideas for additional listing photos that we can use. So we'll just scroll through and you can see here in this listing, they are offering the messy bun with a lot of different facial features and different hairstyles. So that gives us a lot of ideas or options that we can use. And then we can just look at their other photos. So now they're showing the bow where it's clear and the glasses are clear. And now they're showing the mom and the kid. And then the different options or variations of the file that you can create just by using the different layers and different features that they're going to give you. So this listing is a great example of what you can do just by showing different areas or ways that you can use your cut file. So we can clearly see why this is a bestseller because of how the Etsy seller has listed their SVG. And here they're even showing the SVG used on a t-shirt and a mock-up. And I will definitely show you how to do that because that is a very valuable listing photo to add to your collection of listing photos in your Etsy listings. So loving this listing right here as we just click through and see and get some ideas of what we can do with our listing. And now that we have some ideas, we can pop over to Canva and create our listing photos. So we're going to go over to Canva and we're going to start with the image file that we created when we were creating our PNG and SVG files. So I'm going to scroll down and try to find that project and we're going to start there. Now that project is not going to be on the canvas size that I want, but I can at least start from here and then use some features in Canva to resize and get the proper canvas size that I want for my Etsy listings. Now we're going to use the resize feature that's only available in Canva Pro. So we're going to click resize from the top menu. And I know that for Etsy, I want my canvas size to be in pixels and I want it to be 2000 by 2000 pixels. So I'm going to enter that here for the width. And then I'm going to enter it in for the height. And what I love about Canva is that you can copy and resize or you can just resize. And what I'm going to choose to do is a copy and resize because I want to be able to come back to this version with this canvas size just in case I need to make any changes. That's just something that I like to do. I am a copy and duplicate queen. So now we have our copy here and we see that it is, it is square and it is 2000 by 2000 pixels. So now we can move forward with making this 
version how we want it for our listing and I'm not going to worry about the kid life picture for this tutorial but you can do the same thing that we're going to do here for mom life for your kid life if you were going to create a bundle so I'm going to highlight this and I want to group it and just to group in Canva all you have to do is take your mouse click and highlight over the things that you want to group and then select group from the top menu and now those two items are grouped together and you can move it around and resize it any way you want to without worrying about um, things becoming out of line so now that I have that group together I'm going to slide it over a little bit because over on the right side I want to put in my layers I want to show that you can make the bows in separate layers and the glasses and now we need to create those images we need to show the different versions of the bow and the glasses so we can place those images over here on the right side so I'm going to do that just in my way of doing it there are different ways that you can do it but I'm going to do it by hopping back over to my Silhouette Studio software and then just making separate PNG images from there and then pulling them back over into Canva. Okay, so now we're in the Silhouette Studio software and I'm just going to use this untitled file or space to copy my bows. I'm going to right click, hit copy. I'm going to go over to that untitled palette and then hit paste and now I have my bows on a white background where I can save them as a PNG file and then pull that file over into Canva. So I am just going to go ahead and save as, save to hard drive and then I'm going to save it as a PNG and then go ahead and name it as bows because that's what I copied I'm gonna hit OK and then I'm going to just drag this over so you can see it and I'm going to check the box so it has a transparent background and I'm gonna hit save and that transparent background piece is really important so make sure you don't skip that so now I'm just gonna get another blank palette to use and I'm going to get that out of the way for a minute and then I'm just going to copy my sunglasses in the same way I'm going to right click copy and then go over to that blank palette right click paste and pull those over onto the white background and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to save it as a PNG file so save as save to hard drive go in and title it as glasses and then I'm going to change the file type to PNG hit OK, pull over that new menu, check that it's going to be a transparent background, and then I'm going to hit save. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those different PNG files that I've saved with transparent backgrounds into Canva to finish my design. So I'm going to go to the upload section of Canva. I'm going to hit upload media and then I'm going to find those two files that I just saved and for me I save everything over to OneDrive so I'm going to go to OneDrive then go to my Etsy SVG shop my mom life kid life bundle or whatever I named it and then I'm just going to select those two files by holding shift and then hit save or upload and now Canva is going to pull those two files in and now I am going to pull those files into my drawing so let's start with the bows and I'm just gonna drag them over and I'm seeing that I've got a lot of blank space because it's using the palette size that I used over in silhouette so I'm just gonna crop that out so I'm gonna choose crop and then I am just going to drag up to get rid of all of that white space because there's no need for me to have that I'll hit done and then I will drag from the corners so I don't distort the file size. I'm going to drag from the corners and then make it a little smaller so it fits over on the side nice and neatly, just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the glasses. I'm going to click on the file that I uploaded. I'm going to drag it over. And just like the bows, the glasses are a little bit too large. And I might need to crop off some of the bottom. So I am just going to use this menu where I can edit image, crop, 
flip or animate and I want to crop so I'm going to click crop I'm going to drag up and get rid of the white space at the bottom and any white space that I might want to get rid of at the top and then I'm going to hit done okay and now let's go ahead and resize those glasses so they fit neatly under the bows and we'll just get them to the size that we want them get everything all lined up using the nice guidelines that canva gives us and now we have our bows and glasses over on the side and we have our lady with our bun so this looks pretty nice and now let's see what we might want to do we can drag her up a little bit just to get everything nice and neat and now what we might want to do is add that we're going to sell this as a png and an svg so we're just going to grab a element a square from the side drag that down to the bottom we're going to resize it so it just goes as a border going across the bottom and since we're using teal that teal is a nice color and then we'll just go to the text tool click on text we'll just choose a random text the first one that pops up is always my brand fonts so we'll use that and it's in white that's okay we'll bring it down and put it over our teal square at the bottom and then we'll type svg just dash png just letting our buyers know what they're going to get and then we'll change the font we just want a simple font that's bold can, that can be read easily when this pops up as a item in the search as because this will be my first listing photo so we want something that's easily easy to read so now we've got our bows and our glasses to show the different cuts we've got our messy bun lady mom life and now we're saying that it's an SVG and a PNG, so we are looking good. One last thing that we can think about before we save this file is to change the background. Canva has a lot of backgrounds that you can use. So see here, I've changed it to kind of a pink gradient. And then here's a gradient that goes from like a black to a white or gray. But there are tons of options. So when you're creating your mockups, Think about using different backgrounds. And if you pick one that you don't like, Canva has this arrow here that's the undo button and you can click it and go back to your last selection or go all the way back to where you started. But I just wanted you to know that you can add a little bit of flavor to your listing photos just by adding a nice background. So we're going to move forward and go with this gradient background. That was kind of interesting to me. And now we're just going to go ahead and save. So we're going to hit the button that says share. Then we're going to choose download. And then we're going to make sure that we do not select transparent background because SC doesn't really like transparent backgrounds. We're going to click so we save only page one and then we're going to hit download and our file is going to save. Now just as a recap, we have our SVG file which we've cut into different layers to give the buyer a little flexibility. We have a PNG file that our buyer can use to do sublimation or other types of projects. And now we have a PNG file for our listing photo. So this is going to be the file that we're going to load into Etsy when we're creating our listing and it's going to be our first listing photo. And what you might want to do is go in and create others because you have space for 10. But for this tutorial, we're just going to work on one and you use the same process to go into Canva and add more pages to this file and create your other listing photos showing different views of your SVG. We're now at the point where it's time to create our Etsy listing. And at this point, if you've not created your Etsy shop, it's time for you to pause the video and watch this video right here. I'll walk you step by step through creating your Etsy shop. And then once you get your shop set up where you're ready to create your first listing, you can pop back over to this video and pick up at this point because we are about to create our Etsy listing. It's now time to create our Etsy listing using all of the files that we've created so far. So this is how you're actually going to sell your SVG and PNG files on Etsy. I'm now in my Etsy shop manager and I'm on my dashboard. 
And to get to the page where you're going to create your first listing, you will use the menu over on the left hand side and right now we're on dashboard and we're just going to go down to listings so we're going to click on listings then you're going to see all of the listings that you have if you're just getting started then this will be blank for you and then you're just going to go to the top right hand corner and click on add a listing and that's going to take you to the page where you add a new listing the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to add your listing photos and you can see here all of the spaces that Etsy gives you. But right now we have we know we have at least one listing photo because if you're following the tutorial straight through, then you've created your first listing photo. So we're going to add that photo. So we're just going to click on add photo. We're going to go to where that photo might have landed on your laptop or computer and hit open and then that photo is going to load so now we have our photo where we're showing our messy bond lady and we see the bows that we've created and the eyeglasses so everything looks good if you want to adjust that photo so this picture right here is how the photo is going to look as a thumbnail meaning when someone goes through the etsy search and searches for mom life or a messy bond when our listing pops up this is what they're going to see if you want to maneuver that image or change it in any way you can just click on adjust thumbnail and then from there you can zoom in and zoom out any way you want now one thing that i am seeing here is that the way i created this design for my thumbnail this bottom piece is getting cut off so I can either raise it to this point right here so they can see SVG and PNG, or I can scroll it down or pull it down a little bit and you just see that. So I really want them to see that it's a SVG or a PNG. And what I might do if I were doing this listing in real life is go in and kind of raise up this square I mean this rectangle teal rectangle I might make it a little bit larger so it shows while I have all of this showing but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to cut off the top part of her bun because I, I think that's less important than showing that it's an SVG and a PNG and then I'm going to hit save and now um, it says my thumbnail has been saved now what I've been noticing on my computer is that when I adjust the thumbnail I might not see my adjustments here the first time but once I go in and I save it those adjustments do show uh, or I publish it those adjustments do show so I wouldn't worry about it if you don't see your adjustments there and if you feel like you're not sure whether it saved them you can click back in and you can see it is still left in the same position to where I left it so I'm pretty confident that everything is okay with that. So I'm just going to hit save. It's telling me my thumbnail has been saved. So I'm going to move forward. Now, this is where you would go in and add all of your photos or come back later when you create more and add those in. So you don't have to have all of your photos when you create the listing the first time. Now let's move on to the next section. The next section is where you can add a video and this is something that i do think is great to add to se listings it's not something that you might have when you first start out or when you first create your listing but if there's any way for you to create a video maybe a video montage of your different svg files some kind of way it's great to add to the listing it's something that etsy is offering so anytime a platform offers some new feature especially if it's a video feature because that's where everything is going these days then it's great free to use it but again that's something you can come back to next we're going to go to our listing details and what we're going to do here is describe our picture or our SVG. We want to be as descriptive as possible and we want to use as many keywords as possible. I'm going to leave a link to a video in the card so you guys can know so you guys can learn how to do your titles and your tags a little bit better to optimize your Etsy listings. But for now, we're just going to think about describing our SVG. So, we're going to call it a mom life SVG um, messy bun SVG 
um, mom life um, PNG SVG cut file and maybe go to um, Cricut cut file. So anything that you can add that's going to describe your image. And I like to take my titles. Uh, I used to, I like to use all of the characters that they give you, but I don't want to draw out this tutorial because it's already long. So I'm going to stop there. Um, the next thing we're going to go to is about this listing. Who made it? You can say that you did. What is it? I like to call my SVGs a supplier tool to make things. And when did you make it? It is made, it's 2022 now, so between 2020 and 2022. And then next I'm going to go with a category. And I just like to, I, I would usually type in something like SVG or clip art or image files. And you can see here in this shop, I only have SVG. So it comes up with the category that I've been using. So I'm going to use the clip art and image files. And then it asks me what type of craft type. So you can use it to do all of these. You can make cards and stationery, collages, kids craft or scrapbooking. So I check all of those. Now we're in some optional fields. Primary color is optional. Um, secondary color is optional. Length, width, both optional. And I don't really use these things when I'm doing digital files or SVGs because they just don't really relate to me. Um, occasion is optional. Now, if you can find an occasion that it's used for, so let's say if you're doing, um, gender reveal SVGs, then baby shower is an occasion that it might relate to. So if you can find something that relates in this occasion box, I definitely would pick it. Um, so I don't have anything right now for messy bond, and this is not related to any particular holiday. And I, when you use this, if let's say she had on a Christmas bandana, then I might say that this was a Christmas holiday uh, product. But just because somebody might buy this for Christmas or use it during Christmas, don't stretch it that far. It's just optional, but only choose these if they really explain or go with your SVG or your digital file. Then we've got subject. And this also optional and you can pick any of these if they fit love and friendship, music, nautical, people, portrait. I don't know. You might do people. She's a mom and you can pick up to three and renewal options. So you've got automatic or manual. So your listings on Etsy cost you 20 cents. You can set it to automatically renew, meaning that once somebody buys your SVG, Etsy will automatically renew the listing and add or charge you 20 cents to your account. And this is the recommended option, or you can go with manual. And if you choose manual, that means that every time somebody buys your listing, you have to come back in here and renew it so that the next person can buy it, which if we're trying to make this a passive system, that kind of breaks everything down because it causes for manual intervention. So sorry, manual intervention. So that's not usually something that I would select. So we're going to go with automatic here. And then you need to choose the file type. So we are actually doing a digital file. So we're going to do digital. And if you were selling a physical product that you would have to ship to a person, then you would choose physical. And next you need to give a description of your SVG. And I might say it is a messy bun mom life SVG. Now, when it comes to your descriptions, there's a lot of extra text that you can put in here. And sorry for my text messages. There's a lot of extra text that you can put in here. And what I would recommend for this section is that you go and you research other Etsy listings and see what things they put in this section. They will put how many files you get. So I might put you get one XPNG and you get one 
x s v g you might put some instructions in here about how to use the file how to download the file from etsy that because these are digital files there are no refunds all of that type of text you would add in this description area but it's going to take you just researching other etsy listings and seeing which pieces you want to add to yours so we're going to leave the description at this for now for the sake of this tutorial um, add a new production partner so we created the svg ourselves so we're not going to add that the next one is section and section is optional but it also helps you organize your shop and i'll just show you guys my sections so i have svg centered around holidays so i have a section for mother's day easter thanksgiving halloween christmas and then summer and i'm kind of building this actually shop. i'm kind of building this etsy shop slowly in the background among other things that i have going on so you can see i stopped at summer because we're at summer now and then i'll move forward but this is kind of a messy bun mom life we might say that we can put it in our mother's day section or we can put it in a general section it just depends on how you're going to section off your shop and then we're at tags now tags are very important tags are what allows the se algorithm to know what your svg or your digital file is about so you really want to put descriptive tags or keywords in here and i have a video that's going to pop up at the end of this video that talks about mistakes that you can make and that video goes deep into your tags so for right now i'm just going to go in and put in some descriptive tags off the top of my head and you want to use all 13 of your tags we might not get to 13 today because i don't want to delay it with me trying to think of tags um, but we'll try to go as far as we can. So we know mom, and I'm going to take off my caps off. Mom life. We know SVG, PNG. We know messy bun, cricket, cut file. And we know that this is, we can use a sublimation file. Maybe DIY crafts, Mother's Day. Okay, so we have Mother's Day, we'll add that one. And we'll just stop there. But when you add your listing, make sure that you use all 13 of your tags. Think of ways that you can describe your image and I'll do another video where I talk about some tools that you can use to help you come up with tags. And now we're gonna scroll down and we're just gonna go to the next section. We're gonna clip over materials because this is a digital file and I never add any materials or ingredients or components for my digital files. And we're gonna go to inventory and pricing. Now you'll have to figure out what you want to price your SVG as. Usually if I have an SVG and it is just one picture, I price it really low. But I also do research and check on what my competitors are selling it for because I don't want to price it too low and I don't want to price it too high. And you have to remember that you are paying Etsy fees. So you need to make sure that you're pricing your files where it's worth it and you can actually make some money. So I'm just going to price this one as 99 cents. And then we have the quantity field. And something that I do for my digital files, especially since I know I have it on auto renew, is that I just go 999. And that way I let my quantity count down from there. I'm not managing any inventory. I really just want my listing to be able to renew each time and um, just go. So I do 999. And then for the SKU, I don't do any SKUs for my digital file. So that is optional and I leave that blank. We're gonna continue for personalization. I'm not offering where a person can ask me to customize this file. I truly want this to be passive where they buy, Etsy renews it, and the next person comes in to buy, and I never have to touch this listing unless somebody asks me a question. So I keep personalization off. And then we have digital files. So this is where you're gonna add your digital files to the listing. And if so, Etsy can deliver your digital files to the buyer once they make a successful payment. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to click upload file and you have the ability to add up to five files. Now, if you are offering a bundle and let's say you have 20 SVGs and 20 PNGs, which will make 40 total files in your bundle, you will not add each one of those files individually. What you would do in that situation is you would zip the files together. So what I usually do is I zip up my PNG files into one zip file and then I zip up my SVGs into one zip file and I will load two zip files to my listing. So if you notice that you have a lot of files that exceed five, then you will have to zip those files in order to get them into your listing. But we only have two files here. We have an SVG and a PNG. So we're going to go and find those files and upload them to our listing. So I'm going to click on upload file. I'm going to go to my OneDrive where I saved everything. I want to go to Etsy SVG shop. Then I have mom kid. And so I have my SVG file here. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to upload it. And then I need to go and find my PNG file, which it looks like I did not put it in the right spot. I think it's just in downloads. And here it is. It's my mom kid live PNG. And I'm going to grab that. And now when someone purchases my listing, they will get these two files that they can download and use. And then last but not least, we have the marketing. So you will only see this box if you have turned on Etsy ads or Etsy ad campaigns in your shop. And if you have, then you have the option to advertise the listing or maybe later, meaning you can turn it on later. But for this one, I would hit that I am going to turn it on later. Now down here at the bottom, you see that you can preview, save as a draft or publish your file. And when you're ready for your file to go live, then you will go ahead and click on the publish button and it will be available on Etsy. But for me, I am not ready to take this listing live because we were just kind of using it for this tutorial and I would go in and, and change some things if I were actually going to sell this in my shop. And so I am going to just click on save as a draft. And now we have a draft of our listing and it will show up right here. And to get to my drafts, I just clicked over here on the side where I could see listings by status, active, draft, expired, inactive, and, and that sort. And you can see here that now I'm, I can see that my thumbnail saved like it was supposed to where it's going to say the SVG and PNG portion at the bottom. And now I have created my first digital Etsy listing. So what you would do at this point is just go through um, based on what niche you chose and continue to add listings to your shop. The more listings, the better. But before you move forward with creating all of your listings, I want to tell you about a few mistakes that you can avoid and this is going to save you tons of time. Click on the video right here to find out what they are.